Shalom, everyone. Good evening. I want to just bring a little word to you, especially in this season that we live in. Um, this week, um, especially today, um, is traditionally called Good Friday in the church. Um, but this week is actually called the celebration or the Feast of the Unleavened Bread or Pesach um, in Israel. Um, basically, it's all about the Passover. So, um, Jesus was crucified during Passover. So, wh why is this important? Um, remember that when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God had been judging Egypt with a lot of plagues. And then finally, God told them, you know, this will be your last night. But what you need to do is to get a lamb seven days before, bring into your family, kill the lamb at twilight, and apply the blood to the lintel and the doorposts of your house or homes. And an angel of death passed through Egypt that night and killed all the firstborn of Egypt. But all the people, all the firstborn of Israel, and those who joined themselves to Israel, were delivered miraculously. And that night, Israel left Egypt. Now, first thing I want you to understand is that the whole concept of Passover was not something that man generated. God instructed it. And everything that God does, he does with a view to make revealing his son Jesus. So that Passover lamb is actually Christ. The blood that was dabbed on the lintel and the doorpost is actually a sign or a symbol of the cross. Because if you connect the lines, you will see that it actually makes up a cross. So Jesus was, our fa the Father was giving us, <coughs> excuse me, a picture of the cross. So this weekend, or this week, is actually the most significant week in the calendar of the church. And I, and I have to tell you that it also coincides with the beginning of the biblical new year. The biblical new year is actually now, not September, October, where we celebrate the Jewish new year. This is actually the biblical new year because God said this shall be the beginning of years for you or the beginning of months for you. So this is actually the beginning of the year. And um, so I want to just give you a little bit of insight into some of the things that are on my heart at this time. Remember that all Israel were asked to stay indoors. Right now, we are being asked to stay indoors. So it's not a coincidence. God is trying to do something. He's trying to bring us all back to himself. He's trying to get our attention. He's trying to reveal to us himself afresh. And he's trying to help us to reconnect with him in a meaningful way. But I want to say something else. This weekend in history... This weekend in history is the weekend that God turned every minus in every person's life into a plus. Coincidentally, the cross also looks like a plus sign. Every minus, every negative, God turned to a positive through the cross. And there's nothing that we can receive from God except it comes through the agency of the cross. The cross is God's provision for the world is God's provision of love for a lost world and a dying world. I want to read a portion of scripture just so that we can get acquainted and then I'll continue for a few more minutes. The Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes. We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 to 6. So Jesus bore our sins. He bore our sicknesses. He bore our diseases. It was a divine exchange. We come to the cross with all that we have that is not, not good, all that we have that is not righteous, all that we have that is bad, and we give them to Jesus because he's already taken them, and from the cross we receive his own 
divine provisions. So I want to um, quickly uh, share with you some of the exchanges that happened on the cross. Number one, Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. Number two, Jesus was wounded that we might be healed. Number three, Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might be made righteous with his righteousness. Praise the Lord. Number four, Jesus tasted death for us that we might share in his life. Number five, Jesus was made a curse that we might receive the blessing. And this Bible, Bible tells us it's the blessing of Abraham. Number six, Jesus endured our poverty that we might share in his abundance. Number seven, Jesus bore our shame that we might share in his glory. In fact, God clothed us in his glory. Number eight, Jesus endured the rejection that we might have, that we might have acceptance with the Father. Jesus, he was rejected that we may be accepted by the Father. Number eight, or number nine, Jesus was cut off. He was cut off. He was cut off that we might be joined to the Father. Number ten, our old man was put to death on the cross that we may receive the new man in Christ Jesus. Of course, Jesus did not stay dead. We all know he rose again on the third day and he rose as a way of justifying us. He rose as a way of declaring that death no longer has power over us. In the book of John chapter 19 verse 30, the Bible says, it is finished. Jesus shouted on the cross, it is finished. What was it saying there? That word is the Greek word tetelestai, tetelestai, which means fully paid for, or I have fully paid for it. Today I want to leave you with this thought. Jesus has fully paid for you to be redeemed, to be forgiven, to be healed, to be delivered, to be blessed, to be accepted, to be, to be brought into the new man. Everything that we want God to do for us, Jesus has paid the price for it, the full price of it, on the cross. So today, we can rejoice. Everything that you need is made available by the cross. All you need to do is believe, trust him, and appropriate these provisions by faith. God bless you. Remember that word, tetelestai, it is paid for. It is fully paid for. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Yevereka Adonai Bishmereka, Yea Adonai Panaveleha Bihuneka, Isa Adonai Panaveleha Viasemleka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you, be gracious to you, and grant you his peace in Jesus' name. Have a happy Passover, have a happy Pesach week. And happy, happy Easter, if you believe in that, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.